What is up you guys? I'm gonna show you guys to do how to make Ableton racks that are really easy to access and they're just uh, time savers. So uh, some of you already know this and uh, will not need to watch this but some of you might not. So uh, let's just get into it. So what Ableton rack is, uh, is pretty much a combination of, you know, plugins that you group together and then you can just save those in a folder and then access them really quickly. So what I did on my computer is I made this folder called Ableton Live Racks. I hid it away in my documents folder on my uh, in my operating software. So it doesn't matter if you're on Windows or Mac, it, you can this works for you. And then you pretty much just add this to your places in Ableton Live. So uh, on my other computers I have a lot of racks but uh, I just started making racks for my newest or newer computer. But uh, I love these, so let me just pull up one of my racks. So it doesn't really matter. They all do the same thing. So uh, as you can see in this rack, I have a uh, massive Omasai and an S1 imager and a chord device. So I have this organ sound. So it's more than just making a preset for massive or a preset for anything because it saves all that stuff. So it's like I have a massive preset, Omasai preset, S1 imager, and a chord device all grouped together so every time I open this it plays my uh, dead mouse remake chord thing whatever so this would take a very long time to remake to this exact detail if I only save the massive pre preset I would have to make the almost side thing again and it's like it's a better way once you have a sound locked down you just I recommend you make a rack out of it so the way to do that is you just once you have all these uh, plugins working together you just click on them all like this just uh, click on the first one and the last one holding down shift press command G and it gets grouped so I can group it within a group even if I wanted to do that so I can have more groups inside of a group and then once you're done you pretty much just uh, uh, hold on uh, you can close it all down and then just drag it into that folder that you made for your racks so pretty much then it gives you the option to name it, to name it whatever you want save it and it's always there so let's see I have some more racks I could show so this one has sausage fattener wow filter it's pretty much just like a uh, vocoder uh, base thing that I can use now so pretty much I can uh, route these vocoders to my first rack and uh, I guess I don't know why I'm gonna use this second one and it you know it saves all your macro stuff and it just does really cool things so pretty much you need to throw audio clip onto this but this is still a uh, a cool rack so let me just make a basic rack with you guys so I'm just gonna create a new uh, little MIDI thing here or actually uh, let's make it audio so I'm just gonna make an audio track and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw on a EQ8 uh, a filter and a compressor. So just the basic things that go on every single track line. So I'm gonna just high pass or yeah, high pass everything beneath 240. So this is gonna be like a my basic uh, synth uh, thing that I would throw onto everything. EQA, I'm gonna open this up, turn on the sidechain, because I will use the sidechain. And I'll make a copy of this, turn off the sidechain. So it's a basic compressor, EQ, sidechain, and uh, another compressor. So now I've selected all those, I can uh, now use this, and this is something I would throw on to every synthesizer uh, track inside of a song. So this is perfect. I don't need to redo anything. Now from here, when I put it onto another synth, I can just adjust the, the uh, compressor settings and the sidechain settings and the EQ, and that's all I have to do. Saves me the milliseconds of time they would take to kind of start bringing all these in and if you want to save uh, you know presets of the compressor like if I want to, this to be uh, let me take this out and just go to the Ableton stuff let's say I just wanted it to be a kind of mid compression setting so let me see generic compressor for example it's just generic oh, oops I dropped it over my sidechain compressor but it's okay I'll just command D and copy that so now it's just a generic compressor. It does very standard settings. 
so now I can close that all down. You don't even have to. You can leave it all open like that. And you can just drag it here to wherever you want it to go. I'll just call it general or just, I don't want to call it that, synth track uh, whatever. Synth track basic. So now I know to drop this on to all my synth stuff. So it's that easy to make Ableton Live racks and they're extremely useful. So I have all sorts of settings on my other computers for special reverbs and special things. So uh, I know a lot of like it takes a long time to make like these growly things. So, you know, like these dubstep big growls things. I, I used to do those quite a bit and I don't anymore because they take forever, but you can. Uh, see how it's beneficial to save these kind of more complexly routed macro things. <laughs> So instead of me having to map all this to the EQ and then make the FM8 patch and then all that crap, it's just so much easier to do that. So that's my last example of that. Extremely easy to use. I suggest you guys use this on top of saving your presets and all that. So uh, that's kind of all I wanted to say. And thanks for watching, you guys. And if you guys um, give out, uh, let's say, 100 likes on this video, I will give you guys the <laughs> Dead Mouse organ thing that I made. And, uh, yeah, thanks guys for watching.